Today, I've got something awesome. Epic. Epic is in the house once again. The Gigabyte G242Z11. This is a 2U server. This is designed more for GPU compute, GPU resources. If you're rocking $40,000 of Tesla V100 video cards, this is the chassis you want. Let's take a deeper look. So this is the back of the server because the back is actually more interesting than the front on this particular server. You've got two NVMe bays, a fan exhaust for the GPU that's going to be located here. We're going to talk about the internals in just a minute. Two redundant 1000 watt power supplies. These are from LightOn, 1000 watts. Look at that. It's so tiny. So, so tiny. So little. Redundant hot swap power supplies. We've got an X16 PCI Express by four expansion slot, as well as a PCI Express by eight expansion slot just below that. And then we've got our OCP3 interface. Now the OCP3 interface is really tall, so you've got a lot of room for a big heat sink or whatever you might be running. That is perfect for 25, 50, or 100 gig ethernet. Let's take a look at the internals. So I took the, the baffle off so you can see the, the heat sink. I've already been messing with this. I've got a 24 core Epic Rome 7402P in here. The P editions of the processors are awesome because they are at a discount. They are cost down. The nice thing about the lower cost processors is that you get all the same horsepower, all the same clocks, all the same power. You just can't run it in a dual socket motherboard. But that means you can run up to 64 cores in this chassis if you want to. Now 24 cores is more than enough for my purposes. I'm also running 64 gigabytes of memory in a quad channel configuration, but this chassis will support up to one terabyte of memory across all eight channels. But look at the motherboard, look at this. It's super tiny. There's really not a lot of motherboard here for you know full access to all 128 PCIe lanes. No, the magic, the special sauce of this case is the engineering that Gigabyte has done in order to deliver PCI Express 4 by 16 to not just one, but four locations in this chassis. So I've already got my AMD Fire Pro S7150 in here in GPU slot zero, but we've got GPU slot zero, slot one, slot two, and slot three. So you can rock up to four GPUs like your Tesla V100 or your Fire Pro S7150 or your 7150X2. It's not a problem in this chassis. It's really, I mean, we don't have PCI Express 4 riser cables for gaming machines. So it's really a lot of engineering that Gigabyte has had to do to bring PCI Express 4 here. You can see on the printed circuit boards for each one of these slots, they have PCI Express 4 redrivers integrated right into the PCB. So you've got these special risers that interface here. We've got a special, you know, slim SAS connection, although it's technically carrying PCI Express in 16 lanes all the way to each individual slot. Even with all of this connectivity, there's still a few PCI Express lanes left over. That's the magic of Epic, 128 PCI Express lanes. Now, as configured here, I've got the relatively pedestrian 1000 watt power supplies, so it's gonna support a couple of 250 watt GPUs or you know, four 200 watt GPUs for a total of you know, six, 800 watts. We've got, a, we've got a, a power budget that we've got to work within, but you can, of course, get larger, higher wattage power supplies depending on what your, your goal is. And of course, these, uh, these Tesla V100s, they drink the power. Maybe you're gonna run something like the A6000. Personally, I think the A6000 is the sweet spot. You fully kit this thing out, it's gonna be a $50,000 server plus. I mean, but that's nice. That's a, that's a lot of horsepower and only two rack units of space. And you've really got kind of a lot of flexibility here because you've got the NVMe storage and you've got the GPU compute, but we haven't even talked about the front storage. No wasted space in this chassis. We've got four three and a half inch bays in the front. Now I've already been messing around with mine. This is a toolless three and a half inch bay. If I can get them to pop loose here. There's like a friction retention clip, the little peg, but all you need is to just pop them in. Now, if you want to, you can secure it with one screw. That's exactly the correct number of screws, but it'll hold it securely. Now, as I've got it configured here, I've got 32 terabytes of raw storage, but I've actually configured this in a, in a striped mirror with ZFS. And I'm also using two of our NVMe drives here at the back for an additional ZFS pool that's a high-speed mirror. And this setup is working pretty great. I've tested Proxmox, which is a completely out of the box, easy install. Now, as it's configured now, there's no onboard NIC. You'll have to add a NIC, either an OCP3 3 NIC or something like the Intel X540 because you need networking on this. It's got the built-in ASP2500, which we'll talk about, 
But in terms of you know other interface, my recommendation, go for an OCP3 interface, at least 25 gig, 100 gig if you can splurge for it because this platform can definitely use it. You can also install VMware. I tested VMware 6.7 and VMware 7.0. And again, as long as you've got a supported network interface, you're not gonna have any trouble installing VMware in this chassis. I've done it, I've tried it, it works great. This is a pretty good chassis to support both GPU and storage because you've got a mix of you know high-speed NVMe, that could be your vSAN or uh, cache layer in VMware. You've also got room for spinning rust, so you've got some local storage here, and then you've also got a fast network interface that'll let you get at your GPUs. So in terms of like a chassis for VDI, if you want to run virtual desktop infrastructure, a cluster of three of these servers and, and with VMware would really be an ideal situation for a VDI type solution. And who knows, maybe we'll take a look at that and do a, a video on that. There is a full guide for installing Proxmox and VMware on the level one forum. Uh, the G242Z11 chassis works really great with VMware 7 and Proxmox. So check those out if you wanna get into that. This has been a really quick tour of this chassis from Gigabyte. Big thanks to Gigabyte for sending it over so I could take a look. I've been running it for a couple of weeks. I haven't had any problems or, or anything like that. And I've been doing pretty much everything through that A-Speed 2500. Now, I work on a lot of servers and I can tell you that servers from other providers, they want to nickel and dime you for that IPMI license. You might get IPMI for remote shutoff, like a basic serial console, but if you want virtual media, oh, that's an upcharge on the license. If you want to do, uh, you know, uh, a full graphical terminal, especially with like HP Enterprise, oh, that's an upcharge on the license. Not with A-Speed. The A-Speed 2500 and the integrated control that you have here, not only do you have a REST API, if you want to get really fancy with bare metal automation on your Gigabyte server, you can do everything graphically. You can do the graphical server install if you really want to. Although it is worth spending the time to do the automation, but you know your mileage may vary. Overall, the ASP2500 really could probably be in its own video. We've covered it in the past. It's a really awesome IP management interface um, solution. And that's what that network card on the one that's built in on the back is for. You plug that in, you plug that into a separate network, a secure network and you can remote into this thing even when it's off. That ASP2500 runs on standby power. You can get diagnostics. Oh, did the machine shut off because something has failed? Well, you can get the diagnostics from that from the IPMI controller. You can also reboot the machine if it's hard locked. You can set up a watchdog and the ASP2500 will automatically restart the machine. You've got a lot of options with that IPMI interface and it's pretty much best of breed for these kind of servers. It's actually better than what you get from, you know, big names like, like Dell and HP, unless you pay the license upcharge, which drives me insane because the functionality is there. Why don't you just give it to your customers? Why don't you just be good to your customers? <sighs> Thanks, Gigabyte. They, uh, they do, and it works well, and I'm very happy with it. So, I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This has been a quick look at the G242Z11. I'm signing out, and I'll catch you later.